Good morning YouTube. Today is the day that I'm going to be setting up my 55 gallon cichlid aquarium and I'm going to be doing this relatively cheap or at least trying to keep it on the relatively cheap side to show you how you can do this inexpensively and still hopefully have a somewhat good looking tank. So stay tuned. so the first thing we are going to look at is this 55 gallon aquarium and my initial cost on this was nothing I got it for free now there's lots of different places to look at fish tanks lots of different places to get them for free Craigslist offer up but a, a newer place that not a lot of people look is Facebook marketplace lots of fish tanks over there so check out uh, Facebook marketplace now this aquarium did come with a little bit of crushed coral on the bottom. I'm leaving that in there and I'm going to cap it with just some regular sand. The reason I'm leaving it in there is because it should help buffer my water and add minerals which I need because my water out of the tap is really soft. Alright we got the sand in. This is what I'm using. Lapis Luster Sand. It's made by a company called Semex and if you are not local to me I have no idea where you can get this from so you can ask me but I'm not gonna have any idea if you are local to me I can tell you where to get it this is twenty dollars for a hundred pound bag I probably used this was almost empty maybe about a quarter of it was left for this if this is not available to you head to like an ace hardware or another hardware store and look at pool filter sand you can usually get at least for me you can get a 50 pound bag for fifteen dollars at ace hardware it's not quite the same, but it'll be similar. It'll be kind of speckled, multicolor look like this. So next, I think I'm going to fill this with a little bit of water. See how dirty it is. All right, so as you can see, filling up the tank. Got my dechlorinator. This is what I use, Seachem Safe. Now, hopefully by this point, you have somewhat of an idea of what you're putting in this tank. And that should help dictate what you're putting in here as far as a hardscape. So many of you know then I am putting shellies in here, so obviously we're going to have shells. And I'm also putting cyprochromus in here. And the thing you want to remember with cyprochromus, if that's what you're going to go with, is that you don't want anything in the upper part of the water column, so like up here. So cyprochromus are really fast moving fish. They love to school and they'll go back and forth all day long. And so they are prone to running into hardscape. So you just want to make sure that you don't have anything up there that they can run into. Now if you're doing and Buna or peacocks, haps, generally that's not a problem, but the cyprochromus, I definitely try to keep it nice and open up top. So I got a little bit more water in here than I was planning on. I got a little distracted. So as you can see, I have my heater in here, and this is the one area I, as well as you, should never skimp on. I myself would never ever buy a cheap heater because I've lost fish to heaters breaking, getting stuck on, and frying my fish. And I know that can happen to any heater, but uh, I try to stick with the best when it comes to heaters. This is an old Jaeger heater. The new ones I don't think are quite as good as these old ones. If I had to buy a new heater, it would probably be the Aquion Pro. And then I've also added a sponge filter over here. This is an uncycled sponge filter. Later I will be adding a cycled sponge filter so we get an instant start and I don't have to wait for a cycle. But now I'm going to try to find some rocks, some hardscape, probably no wood as it's not needed. So let's take a look at what I can find. So I think I might end up stealing a few rocks out of this tank here because they're simply, all these rocks aren't needed in here and technically I don't even need rocks in that 55 gallon tank. All I need is shells and that's it. But I do like to have some things in there. It makes it look better for me. I don't know, I might just go with this single big rock over here just because it's a different color. I'm not gonna use that piece of wood, that's for sure. Uh, I might use this guy here. Maybe, well maybe not. That might be a little too big for shellies. Well, it definitely will be. But I'm going to grab some rocks out of here and then probably fill the tank all the way up. 
All right, so it's been about an hour since my last check-in. I just got back from my local fish store and picked up some new fish. Went to the post office and shipped out some shirts. You guys will have to wait till tomorrow to see what fish I got. But I'm checking back in here. Just want to take a quick peek at the temperature. I don't know if you can see that. Perfect 78 degrees. And I think we're ready to add some fish. So I'm going to be starting out with the Cyprochromus here. And as I scare him all to death, that's not going to work. Let's see if I can. Nope. Scoop out a little bit of water here. I know uh, Aquarium Co op just did a video on catching fish, but that doesn't matter because I'm still really bad at this. Especially when they all run and hide into my black beard algae aquascape. Hopefully, just pull this right out of here. Like so. Get this out of here. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to be able to completely remove that because there is a pleco in here somewhere. Hopefully not underneath it. It's not going to be fun catching them with a small net, I can tell you that much. All that, and I only got one. Alright, we're going to need a bigger net. Three hours later. Well, that was a bigger pain in the butt than I thought it would be. I had to kill my sweet Blackbeard Algae Aquascape. But the only thing that's in there now is a pleco in the back corner that you can barely see, maybe. So I got the Blue Mystery Snail. And that's it. So I'll be doing a water change on this tank. In the meantime, I do have all my Cyprochromas down in here. And I'll be moving them over to the 55 gallon tank. All right, so got the Cyprochromus in here. I didn't really want to film it. Uh, these are really fragile fish. Not so much when they're this size, but it's still pretty easy to break their spine. So I just wanted to make sure I was concentrating on not hurting my fish and not worry about the filming. Now they are doing, you can see them kind of spazzing out. It's because they have all the air bubbles all over them. And this is pretty typical when I move fish into a new tank and there's all these air bubbles everywhere and they get stuck on the fish. They usually try to shake them off. I feel bad, but it's just air. It'll go away. But now I'm going to work on getting the shellies over here. Alright, so I'm draining the water in my shelly tote here. And I'm going to be transferring all the shells and fish into the 5 gallon bucket. And then I'll get them over in the 55 gallon tank. This is going to be way easier than doing Cyprochromus. So when they get scared, they just run and hide in their shell. And all you got to do is pick the shells out. Super duper easy. So I wonder how many I can just get in a scoop here. It's been a while, so they've actually come back out of their shell. Oops. Yeah, there's quite a few in there. Pretty good scoop. All right, so I got everyone transferred over to the bucket. I'm gonna get them ready to move over to the 55 gallon tank. All right, so here we are. As you see, I got all the shells, all the shellies transferred over. Now what I'm trying to do here is I did purposely put all the shells on the uh, left side here, and that's just kind of give the Cyprochromus some room over here because they will come down at night and they'll hover around these rocks and hopefully all the shellies will retreat into the shells so they'll each have their own spot so our filtration is going to be super duper cheap both of these filters were under ten dollars I'm using two of them and I'm using a Tetra Whisper air pump I believe it's the 150 it has two outlets and that runs about twenty five dollars the light I'm using, I'm going to show you two different lights. These are the Odyssey lights that you can find on eBay. The seller you want to look for is Top Dog Sellers. I think a few people have mentioned them before. 
So this right here, this light, I think was $24 or $29. It's a 48 inch and it has the blues and the white. So you can see there's not a lot of blue. You know, every five inches or so there's one blue LED so it really doesn't come through, especially on a deep tank like this. But again, it's lighting up this tank perfectly fine. So for $25, that's what you're gonna get. Now when you step up to the $40 to $45 range, you're gonna get this one. This is the planted Odyssey light. It's 6,500K. This one I believe I got for $39 or $45, right around there. And it normally comes with free delivery. And as you can see, this is a much warmer looking tank. And I actually am gonna be using this one because I'm gonna be putting some jungle valve in here out of my 75 gallon Lake Tanganyika tank. So we can start talking about overall price. How much did this entire setup cost me? We can talk about, first of all, the tank, right? That's, that's your initial purchase. At most, you're gonna spend $55, but like I said, Craigslist, OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace is an excellent resource now. Always tons of tanks on there, at least in my area. And it's really not hard to find a free 55 gallon. Just be sure to inspect the seams. I've said this before, but don't get, a, don't get a tank that someone used for a reptile, specifically tortoises or lizards. Otherwise, if you go snakes, frogs, turtles, you're probably fine. But a lot of lizards like to scratch on the silicone, and a lot of tortoises like to pick at it and actually attempt to eat it. So I've run across that in, from my reptile days. So again, be cautious, look at the seams, make sure that everything looks okay with the silicone if you're gonna get a free tank. Second, we go to the substrate. Like I said, go to Ace Hardware and Garden or any local hardware store, get pool filter sand. Super duper cheap, there's probably even cheaper sources for it. Like this Semex sand that I was using, $20 for 100 pounds, the pool filter sand is $15 for 50 pounds, but still excellent value either way. Now you're talking, we can talk about the lights. Like I said, $25 for this one, which you saw does have the setting for the moonlight, or I believe it was $45 for this one, and it also has two settings, so you can put it on low, and I'll probably keep it on low until I get plants in here just to save on energy, but there's high. Next, the heater. The one thing you do not want to skimp on, and I'm sure a lot of people that are watching this have got a lot of five, ten dollar heaters on eBay, a lot of the cheap brands, but you could be working on ten years on that heater with no problems. But for me, I like the peace of mind. I mean, people say get a heater controller. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy a piece of equipment and then have to buy another piece of equipment to monitor the first piece of equipment. That's ridiculous. I'd rather just buy a quality. Well, I should say, I would rather buy a good unit to start with. And like I said before, if I had to buy one now, it would be the Aquion Pro. Or if you can find an old Jaeger heater like this one is, really good there. Filtration, like I mentioned, both of these under $10. So you figure, you know, $20 with tax, $20 for a good heater. So you're into a 55 gallon tank here for under $100 easily. Now, the most expensive part is gonna be the fish. So the most expensive part is gonna be the fish. So I did a Lake Tanganyika biotope using fish that I already have. So when you're looking to set up cichlid tanks, you wanna pick out your fish first. One of the reasons this setup only took me about a half hour to get up and running was because one, I don't want large rock walls because the Cyprochromus will run into them or swim into them. And two, the only other thing I need is shells for the shellies. That's it. I'll put in some plant trimmings later. Again, that's all free out of another tank. So if you want to go down to like a PetSmart or a Petco, wait for their aquatic sales, go to local fish stores, you know, wait for sales. And then one thing I haven't talked about yet are tops. I'm using glass tops on this. You can make your own. I buy sheets of Lexan, like what's in my 75 gallon tank here. And it's just, you know, you buy an eight foot sheet for $30 and you have tops for uh, numerous tanks. So you can do that if you're setting up multiple tanks or just go with the glass tops. You can get them for like 15 bucks. Really not a whole lot of money there. 
But again, we're still into this for under $100. So you can collect these rocks for free. The only thing I would recommend is, you know, cleaning them and scrubbing them with hydrogen peroxide or whatever you feel comfortable with. The one thing you do not, I repeat, do not want to do with rocks is boil them because they will explode. And that's something you do not want to deal with. If you don't believe me, just Google it. Boiling rocks will explode. Not all of them, but they can. So don't do it. You can see all my shellies here are starting to set in. They've all got their shells picked out already. It's going to be a lot of fun watching this tank over the next week or two. And there's probably going to be shells way over here. They're going to be digging mounds. And I'll definitely do updates on this tank and show you exactly how they're aquascaping. That's the one thing with shellies. I could have spent two hours aquascaping this tank and they would have just mowed it all down and redid it in a matter of a day anyway, so don't waste your time aquascaping a shelly tank. So here, these fish are definitely happy because I've already got a pair breeding. I don't know if you caught that, but she is flashing him to try and to seduce him, trying to get him to go in that shell where she's probably already laid the eggs. It's a real dark color on her too. Of course I'm going to do that. Alright friends, there you go. How I set up an African cichlid tank, specifically for Lake Tanganyika. So under $100 we got that entire tank set up, all equipment, and just wait to see in like, I don't know, 2-3 months. I'm going to add some jungle valve. Once that starts to spread, that tank is going to look amazing. All for under $100, not counting the fish, mind you. The fish were definitely expensive. The Cyprochromus were $30 bucks each. The my original colony of Maltese was $10 each, and I got, I don't know, a dozen of them. I don't remember, I've had them for so many years now, but it should look really, really good, and I'm really looking forward to it, and I can't wait to show you guys the progress. All right, and now for the channel of the, ooh, this tank is looking really good right now. I'm, I'm gonna show you. Check this out. Don't mind the algae bloom, but this tank is looking especially green right now. Dwarf hair grass is spreading nicely. I actually haven't taken the time to look at this tank in a while. Maybe I'll have to do an update video on this when I get back on Sunday. Well, tomorrow for you guys. I don't know, that's looking really green right now. I like it. Okay, so anyways, back to the channel of the day. Today is gonna be NFK, Native Fish Keepers. I've been watching this channel for a really, really long time. One of the first that I ever subscribed to. If you can't tell by the name, he keeps native fish to North America. He just got done setting up a 240 gallon native fish tank that is just amazing. So head on over there, check it out, subscribe. Subscribe here if you haven't. Everything will be popping up around me like always. And like always, I will see everyone tomorrow.